So you've probably seen people learning to draw by building stuff up from simple 3D shapes like cubes and cylinders and spheres. And then you might have seen other people learning to draw things from life or from photo reference with a completely different approach where they're trying to match what they're seeing um, in the image with a lot of observation, like measuring and checking how things line up with each other and stuff like that. And those are two quite different approaches to learning to draw. So which one should you spend your time on? It's a question that I have obsessed over too much, but it's such a fundamental question um, and we're gonna address it today. My name's Kenzo and this is Love Life Drawing. And just for some context, uh, this is a life drawing channel. So even though I'm trying to talk about drawing in general here, I always am thinking about stuff from the point of view of learning to draw people. Um, let's talk about the observational approach first, all the measuring and stuff, you know, like how many times does the head fit into the torso or what's the width relative to the height and then what lines up with what vertically, what lines up with what horizontally, what are the angles things are at. You might have heard of a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, which really pushes into this observational approach. And you do all these exercises to learn how to see, how to draw what you're seeing without it all getting distorted by the symbols in our head. You can also do stuff like dividing a reference image into a grid, then use the same grid on your drawing and then copy each square of the grid over as a way of kind of replicating what's on one onto the other. Uh, some people do really long, um, I haven't done this, so I hope I'm not, you know, representing this wrong, but bark plates, like you try to match what is on the bark plate in your drawing exactly. And it's this powerful skill to build your observational skills and your mark making skills. So you can kind of just do the basics of this approach with some measuring and some checking alignments, or you can go deep into it and really try to perfectly capture what you're seeing on the paper. And the benefits would be you get over those symbols that we talked about and you get good at making marks, a variety of marks, because to replicate what's on those bark plates or to replicate what you're seeing in real life, you probably have to use quite different, more nuanced marks, right? So one is, another word for this could be copying, right? What's the point of just copying something when you could take a photo, a camera, is the ultimate observational tool. So just do that, print it out. What's the difference? Um, and you also might say that it could teach some bad habits because if you're really, really trying to meticulously sort of match everything, you put a lot of emphasis on details. You're spending a lot of time on details. Whereas in the early days of learning to draw, you probably should spend a lot of time on simplification, on finding just the first bits of the drawing where you're just mapping things out. That's the skill you want to build. You don't want to go too deep into these observational things. Let's talk about the other approach to drawing, which is construction. What I'm talking about when I say that is breaking things down into simple 3D shapes like cones and cylinders and spheres and boxes, um, and then building up your drawing that way. So simplifying it down to shapes that you can apply perspective to more easily, and then you build up the sophistication. Uh, the great thing about that is you're going to be able to apply perspective to that pretty well and a drawing with good perspective feels right. It feels natural, it feels like what we would see in the real world and it feels like it has depth and that's one of the big tricky things. You're doing a 2D drawing and you want people to look at it and feel that it's 3D. Let's say you're drawing a person and you turn them into a series of boxes and cylinders. That sounds like a robot and it would feel a bit robotic if that was your approach. Even if you then built on your anatomy on top of that, if that was your primary thing you were thinking about, uh, you would kind of be going away from some of the life and energy 
that's in the figure. And sometimes those drawings do feel a bit uninteresting. They feel technically good, but a bit uninteresting sometimes. Also, when you really break things down into those shapes all the time, when that's how you see everything as pre-prepared forms in your mind, like suddenly everything, now you've got new symbols in your head, you know? The wrist is a box. And it's true, the wrist is quite box-like. Um, but if you automatically see everything in these terms, you've trained yourself only that way, then you're gonna miss out on some cool shapes. You know, some interesting negative space around the figure that you aren't looking for when you do that, or interesting abstract shapes in the shadows, which you might not be looking for and bring out if you are always just kind of rebuilding things in, the, in terms of those shapes. My basic point about all of this is the third way. So these two schools of thought kind of, I think they argue with each other a little bit or, or maybe not argue, but one thinks they're better than the other one, you know? <laughs> and I kind of think that these, you could go deep into either of these and it would be cool, especially for construction. If you wanna um, get into like designing vehicles and, and buildings and stuff, you can go deep into constructing things with good perspective. And for the observation, you know, if you're doing like really advanced, like sight size style observational drawing, you might hear my daughter yelling. Uh, if you get really deep into that, you can create beautiful artwork. And if that's what you love, then go for it. You know, I love drawings from both of these schools of thought. But what I really love is when someone takes a little bit of this one and a little bit of that one so that they can draw okay draw well enough draw pretty well and then they move on to other skills and they don't get just caught up in one of these areas of drawing technique and they move on to other skills like storytelling so if they're doing illustrations they have a beautiful narrative you know maybe it's not super advanced construction or maybe it's not perfectly observed but They've really, you know, sort of thought about the character and the feeling that it's giving in the, uh, in the story. Or the design, their shape design is lovely. Or their use of color and light is really, it moves you, it's interesting. You fall in love with it and you wanna put it on the wall. As opposed to it being really impressive technically and you think that's good, well done. If you, can take elements from both of them. Don't think of them as mutually exclusive because they can complement each other if you take the right bits of each one. And that helps you to draw. And then you can take that drawing skill and do so much more with it. So it's like the 80-20 rule, you know? There's 20% of each one of these things that's gonna provide 80% of the value. So for the construction side, you could learn about how to draw a box in one, two, and three point perspective, which isn't that hard and doesn't take that long. And then practice it to the point where you're pretty good at just doing it intuitively. So you don't need to draw the whole grid and everything every time. And you go out and practice drawing stuff from life and you get more and more of an intuitive sense of building up perspective. Then on the other side, you practice some of the observational skills, not grids and stuff like that, but just finding alignments, finding angles, seeing negative space and seeing interesting abstract shapes created by the light and stuff like that. Because as you do that and you go out and draw from life, that's all gonna build up your eye, but also it's gonna build up your visual memory and your language of different shapes and lines and angles. And it's gonna, appear in your drawings even when you draw from imagination. So what does that mean in practice? We have tutorials about the observational skills that I think um, are most useful, especially for drawing people. So I'll link to those below. And then we already have tutorials about some of the more basic perspective principles that are gonna have most of the impact on your drawings. So I'll link to those below too. 
So I hope that that has provided some clarity. I do appreciate that there are other views out there. So let me know in the comments what you think. And um, thank you guys for watching. It is absolutely boiling in here. And I hope I'm not sweating too much. See you in the next video.